In this video, we're going to take some footage and add 3D models into that footage, but just to make it more realistic, we're going to make the surroundings reflect off the material, all within DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Now, just so you don't think I'm crazy, this tutorial was inspired by Eminem's video for Godzilla. There are tons of special effects in that video, and today we're going to focus, obviously, on the part of the video where the knives are surrounding him. So let's go ahead and hop into DaVinci Resolve. So here's the footage that we're going to use to track our 3D objects into. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to cut this down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and clip the end there and I'll clip the beginning over here. The next step in the process, once we have the right length, is to right click and choose New Fusion Clip. From there, we can head over to our Fusion page. On the Fusion page, we have the media in node and the media out, which is our starting and ending points. The first thing that we're going to do to start this process is to pull up a camera tracker node. It attached itself to the end, so what I'll do is disconnect that and bring it in between both. With that node selected, let's look at our inspector on the right hand side, and I'll choose the camera settings. We're not going to be changing too much here. I will change the film gate to 1.86 because this is a little bit wider than 16 by 9. And by entering that, that should help us get a better track. Now we can click on the track settings. Those settings look good, so now we can click on auto track. I'll scroll up through the footage, and it appears to have done a really good job of finding points to track. So now we head over to the solve settings, and this will determine how good our track is. I'm not going to make any adjustments here. What we'll do is solve first and see how well it does. What we're looking for is anything under one. For HD footage, you generally want that under one. This is an HD timeline. And for 4K footage, under 0.5. So this is really good. From here, we're going up to export, and this will allow us to set up our scene. Right now it's set to aligned. You'll notice there's no numbers under the origin or orientation fields. What I'm going to do is change align to unaligned. So let's move a little bit forward in our footage and I'll determine what's the center of our scene. That looks pretty good. So maybe I'll select one or two points over here and head over to the inspector and set from selection. So that will be our origin. And our next step is to basically set what will be the ground. So this will give the orientation so that Fusion knows what's up and down. What I'll do is select a number of these points here that will determine what the ground plane will sit on. And I think that looks pretty good. So what I can do now, make sure that's set to XZ plane, which says ground, and set from selection. Once we have all those set, I'll change it back from unaligned to aligned. We don't have to adjust any more settings from here. So now at the top, I will click on export. This generates some nodes. I'll drag these over to the middle. We no longer need the camera tracker node. We'll keep it because we may need it later. So I'll just disconnect it from the media in and media out, move it off to the side and connect the camera renderer to the media out. Just to make this nice and tidy, I'll move this down a little bit. I drag the Merge 3D up into the viewer. We're going to change that from perspective to camera 3D. Those tracking points make things hard to see, so what I can do is choose point cloud, the node, and change it from cross to point. Now it's taking up less of the scene and it may be a little bit easier to see how well the camera was tracked. I'm playing through the footage and now we can use that purple ground plane and those tracking points to see if they look as if they're realistically within the scene. The grid within Fusion is a little bit distracting, so what I'm going to do now is right click and choose 3D options and then unselect grid. So now we're left with that purple ground plane and all our tracking points. Watching through the footage, it does look as if it's realistically within that scene, which is exactly what we want to see. And a lot of those tracking points are green, which means a lot of those are solid tracks. So now that we determine that everything looks good and the ground plane moves with the ground, we no longer need to see it. I'll select ground plane and uncheck visible. Just so that we can keep track of everything, I'm going to right click on the first clip, which is our footage, and label it that way so that we know what it is. The next step in our process is to bring in the 3D model. So I'll drag that from our media pool into the node tree. And what I'll do is also bring down the texture. Again, I'll right click, rename, and then we will call this knife texture. And above our footage, I'm going to click on the two boxes, which will bring up two viewer windows. 
This is what our model looks like. Because there's no lights or texture on it, all you're seeing is the white model. What I can do is drag the mesh over to the right hand side, drag the texture into the material, and now we have a knife with the material applied. This knife and texture is something that I downloaded for free from a 3D model site. Now we need to grab an HDRI which will help us create the reflection. We need to find something that's very similar to our actual footage. I'll link this website in the description below. This one right here is pretty close to what we need. We obviously can make some adjustments, which I'll show shortly. We don't need anything too big. We can actually choose 1K, 2K, 4K. I'll leave it at 4K. AXR will be fine for DaVinci Resolve. So I can click on download and we can add this to our media pool. I'll take the knife texture and model and move it off to the side because now we're going to address the HDRI that we just downloaded. I'm heading up to the media pool and we can drag that from our media pool into our node window. It does look a little different because it is HDR and we're not viewing it in an HDR space. But I'm going to show you a quick workaround which we can use in this case for the purposes that we need it for. I'll hold control and space to bring up our tool options. And from here, I'm going to start typing in Cineon. So we'll choose the Cineon log node. We can connect our HDR footage into that. I will drag that node up into the window so we can view it. It appears as if it's worse, but what we can do in the inspector is change it from lin to log. So now we're looking at log footage. What I've done now is bring in a log to Rec 709 LUT, and you can use whichever one works for you. Now I'll connect that previous node into the LUT, and then we can drag that node up into our viewer. And now it looks a lot more like what we downloaded. Our original footage looked like this. We changed it to log, and then by adding the LUT, we're back to where we need to be. However, we want the trees in the left viewer to match what's on the right hand side. From our toolbar above the window, we can drag in a hue curves node. In the inspector on the right, I'm going to deselect the saturation checkbox and choose hue. My intention here is to change that green to more of a yellow. The first thing you want to do is drag the hue curves node up into the viewer on the left so we can see our changes. Now I can choose the purple dot under green and start moving that up and down until it looks similar to what we're seeing in the right hand viewer. We can probably get very close this way, but what I've learned over the years is that actually trees are more in the yellow range. So I'm going to select the dot under the yellow and see if we can get any closer. However, it is still a little bit saturated. I clicked on saturation, but it's a little confusing seeing both. So I'll unselect hue and I'll drag down on the dot under yellow just to tame down that saturation a little bit. So with those three additional nodes, we were able to get those two scenes looking very similar. Now, because those HDRI maps are recorded as a 360 map, what we need to do is create a sphere map. So control space, type in sphere, and add a sphere map into our node tree. If I take that node and drag it into our left-hand viewer, this is what we can use as a reference for our reflection. In case you're curious what the HDR image looked like originally, what I can do is drag a shape node into our node tree. I'll right-click, drag a line into that node, choose material. I'll drag that up into our viewer on the left hand side. We need to change that from plane over to a sphere. Let me adjust the view a little bit. I'm going to scroll in and now we're within that sphere. And if I pan around, this is what the image looks like. It's a little bit contrasty because we're not adding those other nodes, but this is what the image looked like when it was taken. Obviously because of the path and the trees, I think it's a good substitution for our footage. I'm going to take the sphere map node and drag it into our right hand viewer. We can leave the one on the left just for reference. We can head into our inspector and drop down rotation. And I'll start moving the X axis and the Y axis all around and see if we can get something that we're pretty happy with. I'll move the Z a little bit. It's starting to look a lot better. Maybe come back to X and make some more adjustments. And I think that's a good representation of our scene. We have the trees, a lot of the grass, and we included part of the path also. Now for this to actually be a reflection in our model, what we have to do is select the reflect mode. Pressing control and space will bring up our tool menu. I'll start typing in reflect until we have our reflect node. Now the reflect node has a bunch of inputs and we have to be very particular about which ones we connect different nodes into. Right click, drag it over that node, make sure that I have reflection color material highlighted, and then we can let go. I'll drag this into the left hand viewer so we can see what it's doing. With that node selected in the right hand side on the inspector, I'm going to adjust the face on strength. 
this essentially adjusts how reflective our model is. Right now, you'll notice if I drag it all the way to the right, it's almost like a mirror. In our case, we don't want it that reflective. We want to appear that it's within the scene, but we don't want it to be overwhelming. So we'll head in the other direction and move the face on strength down. I'll leave it there for right now because we'll be able to better determine this while it's on the model. First thing I'll do is disconnect that shape 3D and delete it because we no longer need it. Before we move on to the next step, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, ArtGrid. ArtGrid is my choice for high quality, royalty free footage. They have a wide range of formats, including HD, ProRes, 4K to 8K, RAW, and Log. They have filmmakers from all around the world, so you're getting a wide selection of different types of footage. Those filmmakers group the clips into a collection known as a story, so you'll be able to find a clip that may be similar to what you're looking at, but different enough that it better suits your project. I've used a few royalty-free footage sites, and ArtGrid is by far the best. If you want two months on top of a yearly subscription, follow my link in the description below. And the next thing I'm going to do is connect the texture from the model into that reflect node. So we no longer need it connected into the 3D model directly. Before we move forward, again, I'll right click, choose rename, and we'll actually name that FBX mesh into the knife model. And then now I'll right click, drag it over our reflect mode, and this time we're going to choose background material. From there, I'll right click, drag it over our knife model, and that will be the material. Then I'll drag that node up into our viewer, and this is what it looks like applied to our model. Now looking at it on the model, it does appear that it's very reflective. So what I'm going to do is actually head back into that reflect node and lower that face on strength a lot more. Now if I hold down alt and pan around, we're getting the texture that we had initially, but you can see a little bit of that reflection, which is exactly what we want. From here, control space on our keyboard, and I'm going to add a duplicate node. And actually it's a duplicate 3D node. Right click, drag it into scene input, and I'm going to move all these nodes over because it's starting to get a little bit messy and we're going to end up connecting the top half to the bottom half. So I'm going to move this into position. And now I'll take a duplicate node and move it up into one of our windows. I'm going to hold alt and use my mouse to drag around the scene and get this into a position so I can show you what we're doing here. We want four of these knives. I'll drag that over until it says four. You may notice that nothing appears to have happened in our window, and that's only because all knives are on top of each other. So in order to adjust that so we can see it, I'll head back over into the inspector, and in the translation section, I'm going to choose Y offset. I'm going to right click, drag that over our Merge 3D node, add it in as one of our scene inputs, and because we have the media out in the right hand viewer, now we can see the result of merging those two node trees together. Obviously that's the wrong orientation, so we can make adjustments there. By the way, I know the two viewers look different, but that's because the one on the right is actually a 3D camera, and the left is just a view that I set up on my own. Now I've adjusted that view on the left-hand side just to make them more similar. We don't want the knives to face that way, we want them facing her. So I'll select the 3D model, and then we can head into translation and start rotating these around. I've already adjusted the X, and now I'm adjusting the Y so that the knives are facing our subject. Now my intention here isn't that they're one on top of each other, so we can come back to the duplicate 3D node and adjust our offset. I'm going to double click on the word Y offset to reset that back to zero, and now I want to adjust the X offset. One of our knives is a little bit off scene, so I'll head back into our knife model, We'll make an adjustment on Z so that we can move it backwards and forwards as we prefer, and X so that we can move it from side to side. And now we can fit all four models into our scene. Now we're pretty much where we need to be. We tracked our footage, we have the reflection. Now we just need to play through our footage and make sure that they stay in the same spot in 3D space. And I'm already noticing that's not the case. They appear to be moving with the scene. You'll notice that a lot on the right hand side with that knife actually going past that tree on the right. So we just need to make one more adjustment. It's a good thing we kept that camera tracker node because that's where we're going to make our adjustment. Before we had to tell Fusion where the ground plane was. The other thing that Fusion doesn't know is how big our scene is. In other words, it doesn't know in between two points if it's just a foot or if it's a mile. So essentially what we can do is select two points, choose set from selection and make our adjustments that way. Now, if you don't see scale, what you'll have to do is change the align to unaligned. And instead of using one, what I'm going to do is move this up to 
maybe right around five. There are ways to dial this in so it's very specific, but we can use five just as a reference. If it doesn't improve our scene at all, we can continue to make adjustments. Now, before we do anything else, we wanna change it back from unalign to align. And then at the top, we can choose update previous export. Now that we've done that, if we scrub the raw footage, now it appears that the knives are within our scene and not moving through 3D space. The other thing you may have noticed is that it adjusted it in Z space and it also adjusted the scale. So now we can come back and adjust our translation. So obviously I'm going to move these in Z space because I prefer that they're a little closer to the camera and then I'll move it up in Y so that it's a little farther off the ground. And now we'll play through the footage and see how it turns out. And this is our final result. We have our models within the scene. We have them duplicated. We're getting a nice reflection of the surroundings and they're not sliding all over the place, which is exactly what we want. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, there's a playlist on the screen right now. If you'd like to follow all the tutorials that I make, please subscribe to the channel. And once you do that, I'll see you in the next video.